15. We are live on the YouTube. We are in Attleboro for the Crimson Tide MIAA playoffs where they'll be facing off against the Attleboro, Attleboro Commandeers. With me is George Holman. George, what are the key to the games tonight for the Crimson Tide to get a victory tonight? Well, we're going back with the original starting lineup of David D'Souza, Stephen Cardero, Cleves Erlis, Allison Dasquez, and Kevin Ruiz. And we're going to need our three big seniors to have a big game in order for us to pull this one off. Um, we're in a little slump, but we're planning on coming out of this slump round one and um, pulling off a big win. So we're looking, so we're trying to, we're going to push really hard to get into the second round here. What do you expect from the big three seniors tonight? Because uh, my honest opinion, they need to get down low, give it to the big guys underneath, draw the fouls, and get to the free throw line. Well, we're going to need a very well-rounded game, especially from Kevin Ruiz. Ruiz. Um, Kevin and Allison, between the two of them, we're going to need a complete game. And we got Kamar Kamari Ellaby coming off the bench, and we're going to need a we're going to need a big game from him as well. Defensively, they've struggled a little bit. What do they need to do? Sell down on defense and defeat the Commodores here tonight. Well, we're going to um, we're going to try to press them a little bit. We're gonna try to we're gonna try to trap we're gonna try to trap them as often as we can and put a little bit of pressure on the team. Gotcha. Offensively, they need to not create any turnovers. What would you say to these kids to stay focused and not create turnovers for the team and just get the ball underneath or to the open man and get that open jump shot for them? Well, today I expect Steven to really get his game going again. Um, Steven is a deadly deadly offensive player when he gets going and tonight we're going to need Kevin to have one of his best games. So basically he's going to step up and bring it to this Autobarro team because this Autobarro team's no joke. They're 13 and 9 and I see a few players over 6 feet tall and Duncan over there earlier. Well, um, I can't speak much on them but I know we haven't shown our best game yet and I expect us to play our best game tonight because um, it's all or nothing. So exactly. we're gonna um, so we're gonna come out and press to the ball, and um, I expect David to have a big game. Also, taking it right to them. Beautiful. All right, we'll be right back with the national anthem and the tip-off right here in Ottawa. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. Thank you, George. You're welcome.
right, tip-off is just going to be on the way here. I am your announcer, Jonathan Bermach, and welcome to EHS Channel 15 live on the YouTube. We have MIA playoff action going on right now with the 10-10 Crimson Tide battling it out with the Ottoboro Commandeers here in Ottoboro Gymnasium. By the way, this school is beautiful. It's huge. And they're still building around this campus as well. There's still during construction trucks everywhere. So this place is massive. It's only going to get bigger and bigger. Taking a tur tip off is Clarence Eris. Alborough off to a quick 2 0 lead off that tip off. And that is Jaden Outland, the first two points here tonight in this MIAA tournament. And as you can hear in the background, the Alabaro student body making a lot of noise and a lot of Hawaiian shirts as well. Steve, jump shot. Won't fall, rebounded. Out of bounds, and it'll be Alabaro's ball. Allison. Try to get the rebound there, but out of reach and out of bounds. Here comes Ottoboro. Every end of the 1-3-1 defense. Ball on the floor, kick out to the side. Fakes it. Swings it around. Padero right in his face. Cross court, wide open three. Air balls it. Strips it away. Ruiz with it. It's up court to Cordero. Cordero makes a move. Lose the control of the ball. Saved by Alabaro. Here they are the other way. No good. Offensive rebound. Draws a foul. And Alabaro will be going the line for two. Try to see who the foul is on. And fouls on Kevin Ruiz. This is first for the night. At the line is number 21, Neo Franco. This is the first one. This is both of them. Rebounded by Erlis. Souza with it. Cordero. Spin move there. Allison. Cleveland's. Underneath the Ruiz, power move, can't finish, over the back, good! Allison getting the offensive rebound there, tying it up at two with 6.15 to go here in the first quarter. In the corner again, off the mark for Alboro. Everett's pushing it, oh, slow down a little bit there, a little mess up. Souza. Panero with the move. Out of control rebound there. A little, doing a little too much. So things down now. This Cleveland's. David D'Souza got now. Gets it to Allison. Steve Cordero drives to the middle. And one! Good drive there by Cordero. And he'll finish off the three-point play at the free throw line. Good crowd here in Alboro. He's been decent at the free throw line all season long. And never takes a four to three lead. Excuse me, five to two lead. Long three. Off the front of the iron, no good. Ever pushing. Nice bounce pass Ruiz. Give and go. D'Souza gets denied. He'll stay right here. In Everett's possession. Everett doing a good job defensively. Turnover right there for Everett. Not good.
underneath. Good defense right there. Swinging around. Jump shot. Good. Hitting Crowley. The sophomore guard. Drops a two. Ruiz got it. Gives it back to D'Souza. Kicks it out. Can't control it. Nice save there. Turnover again, Everett. Number 20. An easy two. That's Michael Beverly for Ottoboro. 6 to 5 Ottoboro with 4.16 to go here. David D'Souza bringing up the ball now. No, excuse me. That is <clears throat> Stephen Cordero. Cordero dribbling all around. Gets it to D'Souza. Gets a pick. Nice pass. Trying to draw the foul, but doesn't. But he gets the two. Allison, his fourth points tonight. Seven six Everett. Baseline jump shot. Number net. Beverly with his fourth point tonight. Steven Quindero call off the O. See a screener. Nice pass. Drive to the lane. Denied. As he takes it out. Autoball trying to break this 1-3-1-D. One, one Deep three. It's good. Hitting Crowley. With possibly five points tonight. Autoball goes up 11-7. Here at 2.50 to go. First quarter. Souza, nice pass underneath. Easy bucket. Allison. <laughs> Refs just letting them play. Reese tried to draw the offensive foul there. Both things a little too under the net there. Everett trailing by four. Sump the offense right now. Autobar on a 2-3-D. Nice pass. Draws a foul and go to the line. Nice crisp passing right there from the tight O. Everyone getting a piece of the ball. Get underneath the Ruiz. And he'll shoot two. Ruiz is a decent free throw shooter. Massive substitution for Ottoboro. Three new ball players are in the game now. Ruiz makes both. Coming in for Ruiz is number 13, Leon Dosaro. As you see, Ruiz dapping up with the boys, the bench. Contributing early here in the first quarter for his team. Wow, nice move by number 10. Dante Mons time. Cordero loses control of the ball and will stay in Everett's possession. 11-15, you score. Cordero looking for a pick. Gets it. Oh, he should have drove to the middle there. He does. Layup. No good. And another turnover by Everett. Connor Howell bringing the ball up. Gets the ball back. Underneath the 10, kicks it out. 
I would switch it up to a looks like a 2-3 D. Woo! Off the iron, no good. David D'Souza bringing it up. Cordero makes a move. Sets a pick. Nothing going there. Neo Franco draws a foul for Alaboro. Coming in off the bench. Number 20 and 4 for Alaboro. It's Jaden Outlaw and Michael Beverly. There you see Cordero deep in the back. Getting that ball there. Stump the offense right now. Nice pass. Easy two for Crimson Tide. Cleveland's a nice layup there. Oh, well, passing it around. Everyone's touching the ball at least once. A little long passes, too. Cross court passes. We'll see Everett get a turnover hopefully soon. There are another three. No good. Nice rebound there by Allison. Nice spin move. Uh, yep, too many steps. Another costly turnover for the Crimson Tide. And the Autobotto fan club is letting them hear it. Taking it strong. Drawing the foul. Jaden Outland. The nifty layup. He did that early in the game and made it. <laughs> Loud, ruckus crowd here. And Alabaro, beautiful playoff atmosphere. <laughs> Substitution, a few for the Alabaro. Z. Charles coming in. 6'5", senior forward. Gets the rebound, throws it right back up. And he'll take a trip to the free throw line. Charles' first trip to the free throw line tonight. Comes straight off the bench. And finding himself shooting two. One point three to go in the first quarter. Have a trail by four and possibly five. This is that one, and that should do it for the first quarter. Have a trail by four at the end of the first quarter. Ever doing a decent job so far. The guy just. Watch the turnover ball there. I counted about six or seven turnovers for the Crimson Tide so far early in the, this quarter. They come up with a plan to cut back on those in the second quarter and the rest of the game as well. All right, here's some cheerleaders. Enjoy. Second Quasby getting off for in a few seconds. You see the Arbor team breaking huddle. You see the few Everett seniors in there. Have a nice little discussion as they walk out. You see Coach Stanley. Cleveland's and Allison. 
Cleveland's will bring up, bring in the ball for the Tide. Since Arnold wants to tip off. Cornero bringing up the ball for the Crimson Tide. Eric sets up the O. D'Souza. Dribbling, waiting for a screen or a pick. Gets it. Drives, kicks it out. Almost another turnover. And an actual turnover for the Tide. Across court again. Back and forth. The blue go. Top of the key to the wing. Underneath the baseline, cross court. 10 on the shot clock now. Long three. Nails it. Leo Franco. I think that's the third three tonight. He's in double digits. D'Souza going around. Screen. And a traveling violation by David D'Souza. And the crowd's letting him have it. As he takes a break. Steve Nunn's coming in off the bench. As he gives D'Souza a break. Everett trails by seven. Wide open underneath, no good. Nuns comes off the bench and gets a rebound. Silly turnover. But he stepped on the line. And it'll be Everett's ball. Everett needs to settle down and stop creating turnovers. I know it's the playoffs and a little wound up, but they gotta get loose. Second quarter now. Cornero bringing it up. Nuns dribbles, gets it back to Cornero. Deep three, it's good. Steven Cornero keeping the tie close. Score is now 20 to 16. Well, there's a turnover we're waiting for. Cordero takes it up. Beautiful! Turnover and layup there by Steve Cordero. Bringing the Crimson Tide within two. Deep three. It's good. Jaden Outland. From deep in the backyard. Goes up strong for the rebound, gets his own, gets blocked. Arbor pushing. In the corner, drives baseline, and it's good. Jaden Outland. The easy two, and Everett will call a timeout with 5.58, 558 to go here in the second quarter. Everett trails by seven. And I'll be back right after the cheerleaders do the thing. There you see the Everett bench. Coach Stanley Chamberlain. Going over the X's and O's. There you see in the background. Teacher. 
Mr. Ruiz. Did you see both benches? Look at that split screen. It's beautiful. I have a monitor today, and it's amazing. Do I actually know what's going on? I can call the action how I see fit. There you see that all borrow coming out. And here come the tide. Coach Chamberlain giving them the instructions. They need to succeed here in the second quarter with 5.58 to go here. More people are piling in here in Alboro. Here comes the tide. Alboro in a man man D. Ooh, nice move. Kicks out in the corner, Steve Cordero. Pump faked it and he didn't jump for him. Passes it out. There's David D'Souza jumping. And he gets denied. By Franco. That's Neil Franco for Otto Burrow. 12 seconds left in the shot clock. Rez back in, gets it. Tries to look for nuns. But he takes himself, takes a jump shot. No good. Long outlet pass. And Nunn's drawing the foul there. Was it on the ground? Yes, it was on the ground. And they'll take it underneath. Easy bucket for Alaboro. Biggest lead of the night is nine for them. Ruiz takes it strong. The easy two. Gets the big guys down low. And then the seniors need to step up as well. Alboro answers right back. D'Souza. Bring it up. It's an underneath to Kevin. Ruiz makes a move, spin. Hook shot, no good. Balls on the ground. Whoop, still spinning on the ground. And they got a fresh clock as well. Souza drives, kicks it up. And that's going to hold on to it. And we have a substitution. The Souza and Quinero take a break. Listen, Ruiz will be in, and oh no, Steve Cordero still in there. Try to find the other gentleman that came in off the bench. Desario in there as well. Elris as well. Baseline jumper, it's good. Cordero. Kicks it out. Souza gets it. Jump ball, and it will be the Commodore's possession. Every back to the one three one D. Jaden Outland, another three. 34-20 now. Autoboro running away with this. See if the tie can fight back. Cordero, nice jump shot. <laughs> right off the back of the head of Ruiz. Kevin Ruiz would come out.
Ottleboro. Creating turnovers, hitting the jump shots and threes, and layups as well. Ottleboro just passing the ball. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Another offensive rebound there by Ottleboro. Offensive foul. And the big guy. Number 35 is not on our roster, so I'll find out who that is later. Kamari LRB. Taking an offensive foul there. Coming off the bench. And there he is with the ball. Dishes it out. Elris. Torasso. Nice pass. Heavy into traffic. It's another turnover for Everett. Ooh, little man draws a foul. Trying to dribble through three guys. Kamari Elbery right there, you just saw. A quarterback for the Crimson Tide. As well in the, for football. I have a double team in the man with the ball. Deep three. Off the iron, no good. Rebounded and pushed up. Nice move and one, count it. Beautiful move by Cleveland's Elruz. Elris, excuse me. And Cleveland's trying to bring it into signal points now. And does. I have a trails by nine. 55 seconds to go in the second quarter. Everett will be pressing. Alba doing a great job just passing the ball around. Just about every one on the court gets the ball at least once. Another three. No good. Rebounded. Outlet. Whoop. Look at the draw a foul. Doesn't. Oh, I should have took that shot, buddy. Fans are screaming for the last shot for the Tide. Who will take that last shot? We'll wait and see. Almost another turnover there as he drives. Swoosh! Not by the bottom of the net there. Nice underhand layup right there. Oh boy. Everett is trailing by 14 at one point. Cuts it to seven. And we'll be back with second half action right here on EHS Channel 15 live on the YouTube. We'll be right back with second half action.
All right, welcome back. I am your host slash announcer, Jonathan Bernmachin. We are live in Ottoboro for this MIA basketball tournament. Ottoboro Comadiras are ranked 18th in this tournament, and Ever Crimson Tide a 47th. It's a 48 team bracket, so the Tide barely make it with a 10 10 record, but with, within seven points trailing at half here, so anything could happen here in the MIAA tournament. I've seen crazier things happen in tournaments. Oh, look at that little baby. Look at him bounce him around. You see Coach Stanley patting the back to his players. Hopefully they had a nice long chit chat and motivate this team. Crimson Tide need to stop creating turnovers. They have to stop at the turnovers. They can come back in the turnovers. I mean, they're down seven right now. They can still compete and get entangled with the other team and just get down low. Take the basketball to the floor. Get up there and make a power layup. Love the Ottoboro fans. They're all dressed up in their Hawaiian shirts. Hey, there, Chila has made it out. Everett will get possession of the ball. I believe. Look at that eagle. I'm gonna get my Ace Ventura on later to get my catch my draft. Yeah, I'm looking at you, buddy. <laughs> Anywho, we're about to, I was gonna take the ball at half court. During the regular season, I believe it's 10 minutes, but in the playoffs, it's eight. Oh, it's always been like that. I'm not 100% sure. Crimson Tide. Cordero. Ruiz with the rebound. Oh, drive, buddy. There you go. Misses wildly. Rebound. It's good. Nelson with his eighth point of the night. Leading the Crimson Tide with 12 is Steven Cordero. Ooh, air ball there. Nothing but oxygen. Oh, behind the back. Layup. And it's good. Nelson with 10 points. And a quick forward 45 seconds here in the third quarter. Oh. Allison has three fouls right now. So let's see if they get him out or they keep him in. Justin Hennerham, 60 senior, makes his first free throw. Here's the second attempt. Nails it. Everett down by five. The Souza, Guanero, Allison, Cleveland, Ruiz. Back to Allison, Guanero, trying to get the give and go going. Couldn't connect. Allison wasn't ready for it. Crimson Tide doing a nice little press there. Deep on the corner, no good. Offensive rebounded by Ottoboro. Second attempt, and it falls for him. Commodores go up by seven again. D'Souza, dribbles right, hands off to Codero. Posting up, and gets the offensive foul. Number 21, Neil Franco making an impact in this game. 
his five points tonight. This is Stanley Chamberlain talking to the ref, saying, "His feet weren't playing it. Come on, ref!" As he takes a break, that's Allison. You see, going on the bench. Easy two. Go up by nine. Cleveland's setting up the O now. Drives to his right. D'Souza. Desario. Ruiz. Back to the top of the key. Looking for a pick. Nothing to go on there. Ten on the shot clock. Gets it underneath the rest. Spin move. Takes a strong. Oh, can't finish. Kevin Reeves with four points. And his second trip to the free throw line. There you see Stanley. Barking out orders. His first two free throws early in the first quarter. There's a second attempt. Nice shot right there. Oh, and it falls in ever so slowly. It's like gravity stopped for a second. And Ball's like, you know what? I'm going to go in now. Feels good. Corner three again. Autoborough going on a nice little run here. Yeah, it's a walk. Autobarrel doing a good job just passing the ball all around the court. Dribbles through traffic, kicks it out in the corner, another three. Another deep three. Adelbar goes back up again by 14. As Adelbar goes on a nice little run here. See if the Crimson Tide can cut it back again. D'Souza drives, kicks it out. Open three. No good. Franco bring it up. Crowley. Back to Franco. Goes behind the back. Nice steal by Cordero. So the Crimson Tide need. Oh, denied! Gotta go up strong with that. They see the Waterboro crowd going nuts. Crimson Tide need to capitalize on those turnovers because Waterboro has been doing that all night. It's in harsher hand. And the Crimson Tide finally take a timeout. After Otto Barrow went on like a 10, 12 point run there. There you see the bench. Assistant coach is talking to the players. Trying to get their act together as they trail by 16 with 3.23 to go here in the third quarter. They see the split screen of both teams going over the strategies. And I'll be back after this brief timeout.
All right, Eric gets the ball now. Steve Cordero will bring it up. Everett looking to get some rhythm going here in the second half. Souza gets it down. Baseline. Jump shot, no good. Howell with the ball. Gets in the corner. Oak Outlands. Franco dribbles it out, kicks it to the wing. Oh, I thought he was going to take a deep three there. He didn't. Lucked not to. Five on the shot clock. Another three. No good. Rebounded by Ruiz. Teresa. Souza going strong. Oh, wow. Another offensive foul. He dropped the shoulder into it a little bit. And it'll be Alvaro's ball. You know, he thought about it out there, but he didn't think of being a basketball player there. You can't think about it, just be a basketball player and go do it. There we go. I take it easy with those under layups there, because they could come from behind with a block. Crimson Tide cut it to 12, excuse me, 14, with 2.12 to go here in the third quarter. And here are some cheerleaders doing their cheering thing, and I'll be right back. Otto Barlow will get the ball. Everett trails by 14. There you see with 13, Leon Dosaro. Bench players need to contribute more. They want to keep into this. Also, Everett needs to create more turnovers to make up for their deficit here late in the third quarter. Jump shot. It's good. 16 point lead for Alboro. Elris. Souza Ruiz. Codero taking a three. It's good. Codero trying to get something going here late in the third. Quarter. Ottawa breaking that press. Ottawa just killing the clock right now. And another baseline three, no good. Rebounded by Ruiz. Outlet to the Souza. The Souza stops. Should have drove. Ruiz draws a foul. It's on the ground. Excuse me. Crimson Tide trail by 13. Not 14. Tide will take it underneath. The Suzo will bring it in. There you see the Ottawa coach. And it's a quick ball. 
And that'll give them a fresh 35 on the shot clock. There you see there, Crimson Tide cheerleaders. Is the Alboro coach again. Madero crosses, drives to the middle, spins. Jump shot, oh, in and out, rebounded. Good offensive rebound there. Take it to the ground. That's Anderson Joseph. Creating the hack, and Crimson Tide will get the ball underneath again. Iris, try to find somebody, anybody, get it in there. There we go. Quadero, woo! Quadero spins, drives, kicks it out, dumps it underneath. No good. Offensive rebound, Joseph Anderson, no good. And that is number five. Hitting Crowley, drawing the foul. Hayden Crowley, shooting two. This is that one. Not too many trips to the free throw line tonight for either team. There's a second shot. Makes that one. 14 point lead for the Todd. I mean, excuse me, for. It's not a parl. Cordero, we're going to get the last shot. Crosses him, spins, dishes it off. The Souza gets blocked, takes it to the ground. Oh, that was ugly. But hopefully the tie can turn around here in the fourth quarter. And I'll be right back with the start of fourth quarter action. And we're back. Thank you all for watching Aegis Channel 15 live on the YouTube. Christian Tide trail by 14 as the start of the fourth quarter begins. Good crowd here from Everett. Traveling all the way to Ottawa. Nice little ride down here as well. A very ruckus Ottawa student party here. And here we go. Last quarter. Time to make it or break it. You gotta dig deep here. Comes a tiny create turnovers. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, interrupt a good stop with that turnover, but nope, that all part keeps it. Franco looking for somebody. Gets it to Howell. Oh, there's a turnover. Cordero. Easy two. Creating points off turnovers. You have to keep that going, keep the pressure on this auto barrel team. They do have cracks in the Rama. Now you exploit it. Drives, 
And the foul, and he'll take two shots. Crimson Tide in light foul trouble. Other than Cleveland's Elris, he had three. He had two early, and one in the third. This is it, offensive rebound by Ottoboro. Can't give these guys second opportunities because they're just gonna crush the clock or just drive to the hole and try to create a turnover. The ball hit the eagle, good. <laughs> you see number 12, Justin Harahan. You see Codero. Barking his orders to his team. Coach Stanley Chamberlain. Drops to the ground, off the glass, and it's good. Tied, passing the ball around, loses it a little bit. Jump shot, and it's good. But Darryl looking close to 20 points tonight. He's getting there. Oh, you should have went for it. Oh. Looked like he was thinking about it. Don't think, just do. Anson Joseph coming off the bench, contributing to the team. Big guys in there for mostly rebounds. The cause turnovers. Oh! Looked like another turnover was going to happen for the Tide as the ball is hit loose. Cordero getting posted up. No good. Cordero with the rebound and draws a foul. That foul will be on Justin Haraham. <laughs> Ehrlich with the ball. Drives, top of the key. This is off to D'Souza, D'Souza drives. Oh, and it's offensive. Crimson tied. Getting calls for three offensive fouls. Nalbro taking advantage of it. Ever pressing hard. Oh boy. Easy to. Broke the press real easy. Ottoboro did. Cordero draws a foul there. 5.50 to go here. The Commodore's up 15. Cordero and his seniors need to step up here. They want to make this game interesting. Nice pass. Beautiful. The Souza to Allison. And Coach Chamberlain will call timeout. As they try to get back into this game here. The 5.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. There you see the Crimson Tide bench. Coach Chamberlain is catcher stance. Telling the team his X's and O's to get it done. They see the split screen that we just saw. Both teams. There's Alabama's bench. Good crowd here tonight. A lot of people travel from Everett. In-house DJ's playing the great hits. You see Coach Chamberlain chewing on his finger. You see he's stressed. 
by this team right now. Hopefully he won't be stressed as the towel will make a nice little comeback here. Back and forth. Down the corner. Swings it all the way around. Now the Tide need to take advantage of this turnover. Whether it's two points, a three, something. Souza posting up to 15, draws a foul. Is it on the ground or is he going for two? Not sure. And it's going to be a one and one because the Commodores have some fouls. And that gives the Crimson Tide a one on one chance, makes the first. Five minutes to go, trailing by 12. After that turnover, Allison draw the foul and made both of his free throws. So that's points off turnovers right there. Now let's see if the Crimson Tide defense can slow down the comedy airs. Drives baseline, tries to kick it out. Four with it. Baseline jump shot. Nails it. Jaden Outland. Souza. Quadero for three. Nails it. Tied up by 10 with 420 to go. Oh boy. Off the iron. Rebounded by the Crimson Tide. Crimson Tide pushing the ball up. Souza, top of the key. Gets to the wing, drives baseline. Shuts up, and it's good! Crimson Tide down by eight. Cleveland's Eris. Oh, it was great to turn over there. Otto oh, Brown just chewing the clock, just passing around. Smart basketball by Otto Brown, though. Just dribbling around. Ten the shot clock now. Here's another turnover. Cordero, easy two. Tied it within six. With 317 to go here. Late in the fourth quarter. Good job. The Crimson Tide defense creating turnovers and capitalizing with the points there. There you see the Crimson Tide cheerleaders. And then we'll be right back with more fourth quarter action here in Ottawa. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to fourth quarter action here in Ottawa as the Crimson Tide face off against Ottawa here in the MIAA playoffs. Ottawa has been leading most of this game by 14, between 14 and 18 points, and the Crimson Tide are fighting back now, and they're within six. Ottawa is hitting their twos, but Crimson Tide are hitting their threes as well. Whenever Alvaro's on offense, they just chew the clock away. And we're going point for point with them. Ooh, nice move. 
Nice move there by Connor Howell. Commodores come all up by eight. D'Souza waiting for that pick and roll. Kicks out in the corner. Erlis to Souza. Allison. Cordero taking it to the whole strong off the glass. Offensive rebound draws the foul. And they'll go to the line for two. Allison. Looking for his 11th and 12th point right there. The clock is the enemy for the tide. He gets ready to shoot two. Oh. Tough shot to miss right there. Let's see if he can make this one. Ooh, lucky bounce there. Tied trail by seven. Evans gonna press, obviously. Man press. Autobahn frantically calling timeout. And Coach Chamberlain have a nice little hug with the ref. Coach Chamberlain is very optimistic right now. He's clapping up with the boys. They see a split screen on both teams. Good work here by our Crimson Tide cameramen, producers, and directors. Crimson Tide need to move the ball around, find the open shots or layups. And there's that bird again. Not a fan of him. I'm in a silly hat. Anywho. You got cheerleaders jump around the court. You got DMX playing in the background. And we're just waiting on the Commodores to break their huddle. Connor Howell bringing the ball. In the background, you see some Bruins and Celtics fans. Little kids. You know, Franco bringing the ball up. Franco! Easy layup. The tied of three possessions away from tying this thing up. Nice spin move, like a helicopter. Ooh, denied. Oh, he traveled. He got double teamed right there, took an extra step. And the crowd's letting him hear it. Ever pressing. Albrow doing a good job breaking that press. Albrow sells down now. If I'm the Crimson Tide, I'd be, I'd be fouling right now. 15 on the shot clock. They're just killing the time on the clock. Oh, get, oh, almost had it. Deep three. Deep in the woods. Nails that one. Hitting Crowley in double digits. Baseline, takes it out, underneath, up and in, good. Timeout Everett, 106 to go here, down by 10. And I'll be right back right after this quick timeout.
Christian. Minute six to go in the fourth. Christian Tide have nothing to lose right now. The minute six to go here in the fourth. You gotta go all out here. If they wanna make this very unique and interesting here late in the fourth quarter. Let's see if Crimson Tiger can create a turnover here. Ooh, look at that, double team, and Alvaro calls a timeout. They killed about three seconds there. And you see the Crimson Tide bench. There you see the Crimson Tide crowd. Excuse me, the Autobar fans. The nice Hawaiian gear for the playoffs. We didn't do that stuff when we were in high school. I kind of wish we did. Everett needs to come up with something. 103 down by 10. It's possible. Let's see who has the grit. If I'm a senior, I'm chirping away. My like, guys, let's do this. Let's go all out. Here you see our athletic director, Tammy Turner, enjoying the festivities today. We have a girls basketball game tomorrow in Weymouth. We'll be live on YouTube tomorrow night as the girls varsity squad goes up against Weymouth. We'll be live tomorrow night. My apologies, that's not happening due to the weather. I just got screamed at by one of my producers. <laughs> All in good fun. There you see the ref talking to Franco. And he'll stay right where it is as it deflected out. Not a second of the clock on that. Crimson Tide, pressing, double teaming. Oh, I should have went for the ball, buddy. Oh. Double teaming him, kick ball, turnover. Crimson Tide got it. Try and dribble between the two, lose control of it. Ball's on the ground. Everett got it, now it's a jump ball and should be Everett's possession. Yep, Everett's ball. 41 seconds to go. Souza. Allison making the move. Offensive again. Wow. That's about four or five offensive fouls. But Alvaro is created. As Alvaro bench is screaming for one of the plays to come off the bench and get in the game. Here with 34 seconds to go here. In the fourth quarter. Are you a Franco right there? Chatting up with the ref. As Everett looks to press right here. Kicks it out. Finally drawing the foul. Dorsario drawing the foul there. Connor Howell going the free throw line. He's a freshman god. So he's gonna be a handful for the next three years. For the Hallmark League here in the South Shore. We're deep in the South Shore. Neighboring Rhode Island. 
And he makes the first one. Howell drops that one. The substitutions. The Souza picks up finally. Shoots it for three. Off the no good. Cordero with the rebound. Another three. No good. Ten seconds. And that should do it. Otto Barrow will advance the second round of this MIA tournament. And I believe they wanted Taunton as to say goodbye to the team. I want to thank you all for coming out and watching us on the YouTube live on EHS Channel 15 at home. I'm your host and announcer, Jonathan Byrne Marchant. I want to thank my cameramen, my producers, my director, coaching staff, Tammy Turner, everybody for an excellent basketball season. Because the tide fail, 67 to 55 to Attleboro, and that'll do it for them. And they finish under 500 with the 10 and 11 record. And we are all done here for the basketball season. I want to thank you all for watching us on EHS Channel 15. I'm your host, Jonathan Bermachin, again. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you soon. Thank you.